Hi, everybody. Welcome once again to uh, the basement series uh, as it returns uh, during sheltering in place. Uh, today, we welcome Aya de Leon, uh, who has extensive writing credits, uh, uh, director of June Jordan's Poetry for the People, uh, teacher at UC Berkeley, where she teaches a spoken word. Um, also uh, among her credits is the feminist heist series of novels called uh, Justice Hustlers. The latest book is uh, Side Chick Nation and that, that is available now. Uh, but today she's with something new and different. This is her first chapter book, her first children's book, and she will be reading from it. Uh, it's called Equality Girls and the Purple Ref Reflecto Ray. And, uh, I'll let her take it from here. Uh, thank you, Aya, for coming. Hey, thank you so much, Owen. Thank you to Francesca. Thank you to Moe's, a fabulous Berkeley institution, and the fabulous Doris Moskowitz running it. Um, I am thrilled to be here with my new book. Yes. Um, <laughs> can you see it with the virtual background? Equality Girls and the Purple Reflecto Ray. Behind me are the Equality Girls, um, Jalise, Daniela, Malaya, and Carrie. Um, and I'm gonna read, uh, I'm gonna read from a little bit from the first chapter and a little bit from the second chapter. Um, so Daniela is our protagonist, and what you need to know about her this day is um, there have been some cutbacks at her school and they have cut the girls' soccer team and she's heartbroken and she's walking home with her friends, the Equality Girls, they're not officially named that yet, and um, she's so mad and her friend has gum and so she kind of takes piece after piece of gum and she's chewing it really angrily on her way home. So this is when Daniela gets home. Daniela lived in a second floor apartment. As she stomped angrily up the stairs, she opened the last piece of double super purple grapeity grape gum. At this point, her mouth could barely open anymore to chew it. She tasted a new wave of double super purple grapeity grape flavor, but it wasn't the same. As she opened the door, her jaw was starting to ache and she could only hear the sound of the gum smacking in her ears. Mom, I'm home, she yelled as she opened the door, except it came out as, Mom, I'm home. She couldn't even hear her own voice over the smacking sound in her ears. It was really too much gum. She decided to take some of it out to save for later. She bit the gum into two pieces and pulled half of it out of her mouth. It was only then, as the smacking stopped for a second, that she could hear the sound of yelling. Her mother yelling, her mother yelling, watch out. Daniela looked up, startled. She saw her mother wearing a lab coat, goggles, and gloves. Her mom was on the kitchen floor wrestling with their dog, Mud. Mud was a mischievous golden retriever mix who had something in her own mouth, something that didn't belong in a dog's mouth, some kind of electronic gadget. It looked a little like a flashlight, maybe one of her mom's experiments. Daniela just stood there for a second with the gum hanging in the air when Mud barked happily to see her. The electronic thing fell out of Mud's mouth and hit the kitchen floor. The impact of the fall activated the gadget. As Mud ran over to greet Daniela, a laser ray shot out of the device, zapping the gum in both Daniela's hand and mouth. The last thing Daniela saw was a blinding flash of purple and a smell of burning double super purple grapeity grape flavor before she passed out. It was only a couple of seconds before Daniela woke up. Mud was licking her face and her mother was sitting beside her on the kitchen floor looking worried. Mija, are you okay? Her mother looked down at her through the safety goggles, her eyes wide. Daniela blinked. Yeah, she said, what happened? Daniela's mom was a scientist. She had been working at home since she had lost her job due to budget cuts at the university. She was hoping her experiment would get her a new job. Her mom still looked worried as she explained, 
I was working on my latest laser project, but I guess I left my door open, her mom said. Mud got in and must have thought it was a new doggy toy. Are you sure you're okay? I'm fine, Daniela sat up. She did feel fine. She wasn't even angry anymore about the end of the soccer team. It was as if the laser had just zapped the feelings away. Where's my gum? Daniela asked. What gum? Her mom asked. Daniela looked around the kitchen. The gum had disappeared. So this chapter takes place the next day. The following day, Daniela was walking home with Malaya, Jalise, and Carrie. Daniela found an empty can and was kicking it down the sidewalk. Even though they each had really different personalities, they had become a tight crew. Girl, Jalise said, we can still play soccer. Let's go to the big park downtown to kick the ball around before we go home. Yeah, Malaya said, we'll always be your team. Daniela appreciated their support, but she needed a strong coach if she was going to develop her skills to the fullest. When they got to the park, an orange tabby cat walked up to them and Malaya knelt down to pet it. Carrie dug around in her backpack for the few crumbs of her tuna fish sandwich that had fallen into her lunchbox. The cat ate them eagerly. Daniela took the soccer ball out of her backpack, but it was flat. Looks like you actually wore it out, Jalisa said. Fortunately, there were two seventh grade boys in the park. Daniela didn't know their names, but she recognized them from school. They were kicking their own soccer ball back and forth. Come on, Daniela said, and ran toward the boys. Can we play? Jalisa asked as the boys asked the boys as she ran up beside Daniela. Carrie and Malaya came up behind them. Daniela was already taking off her backpack and unzipping her jacket. The boys regarded them skeptically. No, we don't need any more players, the taller boy said. But there are only two of you, Malaya said. The answer is still no, the shorter boy said. Malaya began to twist her hair around her finger, like she always did when she was nervous or upset. The taller boy got a mean look in his, on his face. What are you doing? He asked Malaya. Curling your hair? No, she said. I just see, he said. That's why we can't really let you play because in the middle of the game, you might have to stop to fix your hair or maybe put on makeup. That made Daniela mad. It was just a nervous tick Malaya had. Besides, not all girls were into hair and makeup. Jalise was the one who loved to get her face painted, a fairy, a princess, a vampire. Believe me, Daniela said, no, none of us is going to stop to put on makeup if we play. The cat that Malaya had petted walked up to Carrie. The shorter boy looked over at it. Yeah, he said, too many distractions. If you see a cat, you can't just be like, ooh, so cute. He made an exaggerated, oh, face. Excuse me, Jalise asked, her voice full of attitude. All the girls knew that Malaya was the one who loved animals. They might have to tell her not to get distracted by squirrels or birds if she played goalie, but they didn't let her play goalie. When she was out running on the field, she could focus. Are you saying we can't play because we're girls? Carrie asked. Carrie was the goalie. She was really patient and could sit calmly and pay attention for long periods of time. No, the taller boy said, but then he didn't give any other reason. Daniela was getting mad. She was a great soccer player. As captain, she had led her team to the state finals. She practiced all the time. She was as good as every single boy her age, even better than many of them. And her friends were pretty good too. Even though they weren't on the team, these guys knew nothing about her crew. They just assumed they wouldn't be good because they were girls. Well, if it's not because we're girls, then why? Daniela asked. The boys shrugged and started to walk away. Hey, Jalise said. My friend asked you a question. The boys turned around. Look, the taller boy said, if you really want to be part of the game, you could stand on the sidelines and cheer for us. Perfect, the shorter boy said, especially since you already have pom-poms attached to your head. There's Daniela with her hair do. He pointed to Daniela's Afro puffs, and both of them thought that was so funny. They laughed with those extra loud ha ha ha's that people kind of yell laugh to be mean. Daniela did not think it was funny at all. She got mad, really mad. 
Daniela could feel the heat in her face, in her jaw, the anger boiling in her brain. When some people get mad, they see red, but Daniela saw purple. It was as if her head was a teapot filled with purple tea that had started to boil. And if you put too much water in a teapot, when it boils, it'll boil over. And that's just what happened with Daniela. Suddenly she boiled over. The anger exploded and, and bright purple rays shot out of her eyes. Her friends screamed as the purple laser zapped the boys in an explosion of lightning. The cat yowled and ran off. The girls gaped open mouthed as the boys both glowed silver for a moment, then fell down on the grass. Oh my God, Daniela, what did you just do? Her friends asked. I don't know, I don't know, Daniela said. She put a hand on her face, which was as hot as if she had the world's hottest fever, but it was quickly cooling down. And then, all of a sudden, the boys stood up and they looked sort of like zombies. But then they started smiling and the taller boy began blinking his eyes and giggling. And then he spoke in a high squeaky voice. All I want to do is put on makeup. He said as he looked around, of course, he didn't have any makeup. So he picked up a flower, he picked it and began rubbing it on his lips like lipstick over and over again. Meanwhile, the shorter boy got up and he spoke in a high voice like his friend. All I want to do is pet the cute little kitty cat. Of course, the cat was gone, so he took off his sneaker and began to pet it and talk to it. You're such a cutie wooly. The girls looked at each other. What just happened? Jalise asked. This is crazy, Carrie said. Malaya said, it's like, like they became the exact thing they said about us. Daniela, how did you do it? Carrie asked. I don't know, Daniela said. I just got really mad and then I saw purple. You didn't just see purple, Julie said. We saw purple sort of come out of your eyes. Is it permanent? Malaya asked. Do you think they'll stay like this forever? She was twirling her hair fast around her finger over and over. I have no idea, Daniela said. Her temperature was going back to normal. But it's like, Part of me is worried about them, and part of me doesn't care. It serves them right. What should we do, Carrie asked. Should we tell someone? Tell them what, Jalise asked. My friend shot a purple ray out of her eyes, and now this boy thinks his shoe is a kitty? We definitely shouldn't tell anyone, Malaya said, at least not until we know more. Daniela didn't know what to do. She looked around, then she spotted the boys' ball. I guess we should stick around and keep an eye on them, Daniela said, right? I mean, Daniela said, we could play soccer while we wait. And that's a little bit of chapters one and two of dun, 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 the Equality Girls and the Purple Reflecto Ray. One of the reasons that I decided to go ahead and publish this book um, is that more than ever, families are really relying on books for their children, you know, in the lockdown. Uh, we're all sort of, you know, those of us who aren't crazy about our kids being on a lot of screen time just need to have an unending supply of good books. And, you know, thank goodness uh, for the fact that we can order stuff off the internet. I just really want to shout out independent bookstores like Moe's and how important it is for us to um, be patronizing them at this time. Um, so, you know, it can be tempting uh, to uh, go to some of the big corporate um, booksellers, but now is the time where Moe's and Bookshop and other indie bookstores really, really need your support. It's so hard because brick and mortar stores are closed and um, they're not massive monopolies exploiting their workers to make sure that they stay profitable. So I just really want to encourage um, all the parents uh, at a time like this, yes, keep getting those books for your kids. And, you know, one of the things, one of the other things about this book in particular is, um, you know, we just need some levity and lightness. These are hard times, scary times and challenging times. So I really wanted something for our kids that had lightness, but also had political content. 
because, you know, we are raising a generation of young people who we want to, um, you know, not be terrified of the things that are going on in this world, but also to be engaged in the things going on in this world and to have uh, an ability um, to recognize injustice and to fight for justice. Um, but also to have joy in the process of doing it. Such a, a great preview of your book, uh, Equality Girls and the Purple Reflecto Ray. I'm sure we're all going to want to read the whole book. Uh, it will be available and is available. Uh, if you want to buy it the best way through Mo's books, uh, it would be at bookshop.org, and there will be a link on the screen, I believe. And uh, yes, th thanks again. Um, Eventually, we'll all be able to gather and we will have you into our in our basement to read uh, either from this or from one of your uh, feminist heist novels. Thanks so much. When some people are mad, they see red, but Daniela saw purple. Oh, I don't know if you can hear my family yelling in the background. Okay. <clears throat> Take two.